I've always been the um, the outcast, and and I was always labeled, you know, the the dramatic one or the loud mouth one. Um, I'm one of five, and it was really difficult to live through what I lived through because it wasn't just me. All five of us experienced the abuse at different levels and it was multiple people in, in our family committing different kinds of abuse. Um, one of the main abusers was finally removed from the household, but the abuse um, continued on my mother's end. She was very physically abusive and I tried really hard to cover up uh, what had happened, but I couldn't. I had a, a small team of people in the school help me gather resources to emancipate myself. But like, you know, many teenagers who are not ready to take care of themselves at the age of 16, I didn't really stay. So I was home hopping, doing things to get by, um, sleeping in parks, um, really, really struggling. I was trying to tell people that I wasn't okay, but people weren't listening to me. So a lot of the time, any time that I was acting out, they really just got pushed aside to me being, you know, one of the city kids who couldn't, couldn't get their life together and things like that. I couldn't cut off the experiences of what had happened to me. So I didn't want to live anymore, but when I got pregnant, all those thoughts went out the window because for me, it was like I had something to live for. When my son was born, I knew that I didn't want to raise him the way I was raised. For me, I didn't want the cycle to continue for my son. So when I finally left that relationship, my son was about four years old and I did everything I could to be able to land on my feet but when my daughter was born, it kind of opened up Pandora's box. So I didn't want anybody touching her. And then eventually it came out that there's reasons why I'm like this. Looking back and after the therapy, I knew it was because I was struggling with the reoccurrence of not dealing with being sexually molested as a kid. That's, that's when I reached out for help my therapist started to realize that I was kind of like on an island alone. And so I looked online and saw the, the free services at Safe Berks. And I went to one of the women's groups and I just fell in love. Like I, f I fell in love with the atmosphere. I fell in love, honestly, like how I felt with myself. I knew like I needed to be in this type of environment. It helped me a lot. I want to be able to use my story to help other people. I want to be able to give people the permission that I needed to talk, to speak out, to be able to do it. My main goal is to have my kids see that just because you fall doesn't mean you can't get back up and still have the worth that you had, if not more, while you're trying to stand back on your feet. I tell my son all the time, I don't care how many times you try something and you fail, you can always, always get back up. And I want my daughter to be able to look at her mom and be proud of her, give her the mom that I always wanted. And because of Safe Berks, I stand in my pride, I stand in my empowerment, I, even if I am 37 and still struggling, the, the point is that I never gave up. I think I'm just really proud of myself. <sighs> Thank you. In my journey through trauma recovery, there was times I felt stuck in the thick of the work. We often hear the term survivor and relate it to the actual trauma we survived, but I also relate it to the work we do to process what we've been through. Survivors must heal from things we never asked for. 
We have to do the work and it's not fair, but it's how we become those survivors. Because of this, we become members of a group we never wanted to be a part of in the first place. But for me, I found a responsibility to myself and those around me when I found that I am not the only one struggling and seeking help and that this group is sadly growing every day. Safe Berks was there for me when I felt stuck. When I joined the Women's Support Group, it allowed me to see I was not alone, and though we never asked for our own individual trauma experiences, we were all connected to each other and how we were showing up for ourselves and speaking out to things that needed to be released and processed. Hearing the voices of other women shake as mine did when they shared their stories, seeing the tears fall down their cheeks as mine did, and watching as a group of women who never met before took turns being there for one another. This gave me the push to move through that thick, gritty part of my journey because I did find my people. Those women spoke my language and understood me even when the words coming out of my mouth were drowning in fear and shame that was never mine to carry. Safe Berks is here to offer so many services to so many people. For me, it was how they stood in solidarity and offered the space to release the weight of things we never asked for, and they gave us a hand to hold, a shoulder to cry on, and space to make a plan to move forward towards a life that we deserve to have. When you meet a survivor, I want you to remember that we survived the trauma through the work that we have to do to heal and that we do need people to speak our language and places to unpack our experiences and help us rebuild our lives. If you are suffering in silence, I'm here to tell you, you do not need to. I didn't know them, but they were my people. You may not know me, but you are safe with me. At Safe Brooks, I promise, you're gonna find your people. Safe Berks helped me find my voice alongside so many others, and my hope is to be able to help other people find theirs by sharing my story. Thank you.